In this video, we are going to discuss 3D scanning a person and 3D printing a statue at full scale. Now, EMS has done this in the past. We have 3D scanned people and other objects that were then cast in bronze at different scales. But traditionally, this was done through the investment casting process. The traditional foundry would use this process to build a uh, bronze statue. Lake Superior State University in Michigan contacted us about honoring Dr. Saluja, uh, who was with their business school for over 50 years uh, as a professor. The alumni wanted to honor him, and they contacted EMS to not only 3D scan him, but 3D print him at full scale, but make it look like a bronze statue. So this was a little different than what we normally did, but we were able to help them out. So the first step in the process is to do the 3D scanning. And for this, we decided to use the Creaform MetraScan uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it's great for scanning large objects. It uses a camera system to track uh, the, the uh, scan head. Um, and as long as the person holds relatively still, uh, we can scan them pretty quickly uh, moving around. Now, even though there's going to be a little bit of movement um, which will give us, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, noise or distortion in the scan data. Uh, it won't matter because there's going to be a second step where we actually clean up the digital file. Uh, but we just had the professor stand still, and it took a few minutes to go around and 3D scan him. Also, the scanner does very good on dark and shiny. Um, the lasers are eye safe, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and we're able to quickly capture uh, a lot of data at a very high resolution. So the professor was scanned multiple times in multiple poses uh, that will allow them uh, to look at them later and decide which one they like the best. And in addition, his shoes and a book he was holding was scanned separately at a high resolution uh, so that we could have that as well. So the next step in the process is our digital artist used a product called ZBrush uh, to bring in the 3D scan data and start cleaning it up. Uh, for example, a uh, hair uh, doesn't scan well at all. So um, we uh, used ZBrush to add the hair and really just to smooth everything out and make it look uh, very authentic and lifelike. And as we mentioned, you're always going to get a little bit of noise uh, in the data f with anything that, that can move around. Um, so that is all easily cleaned up in ZBrush and smoothed out. And then we added in some fine detail, um, you know, and just made it look more like what a, what a bronze statue would look like. Uh, and that included uh, putting the detail on the book, of uh, the uh, pin on his lapel and other things. So here is the final digital file. And if we zoom in, uh, you can see the, uh, the detail. And just how we smoothed everything out uh, to make it look, you know, very realistic, very much like a, a statue. So you can see the hair, um, the creases in his jacket. Um, everything is just nice and sharp and smooth. The detail on his shoes. Um, and this, uh, so once this file was done, uh, we reviewed it with the customer, uh, and if any, you know, slight changes needed to be made, we made those. And really, uh, the next step is getting the file ready for the 3D printing process. Here is a render of the, uh, final digital model, um, as you see here. Now, to get it ready for the 3D printing process, we're going to have to break it up into multiple pieces um, because we're going to print this at full scale. And for this project, we use the HP 4200 3D printer, uh, which has a build volume of 15 by 11 by 15. So we had to break the statue up into multiple parts 
And then we also had to come up with a fastening system or a way to put it all together uh, so that it could survive uh, not only being shipped, but then uh, you know put on display and to last for many, many years. So it took a little time to figure out the best way to cut up the file, uh, not only for 3D printing, but also for assembly. So once we determined that, uh, everywhere we cut the model, we added a flange, and then we put uh, holes uh, on those flanges on, on both sides so that we could bolt it all together. So we used not only an adhesive on that flange, which gave us a large uh, surface to glue the two halves together, but then we put uh, nuts and bolts through there to bolt it as well. So this was going to make it extremely uh, strong. But again, we had to figure out a way to be able to assemble the whole thing um, easily and then get it ready for the next process, which is the faux bronze process. Now, once it was all 3D printed and assembled, uh, we put some filler in on all of the uh, seams and then did some light sanding on the entire model uh, to get it ready for uh, the uh, full bronze process. So to make the statue look uh, like a bronze statue, uh, I've mentioned this faux bronze process. And that's actually painting the statue uh, with a, a specific resin. So the first step was to spray uh, the whole statue uh, with a sanding primer and to do some final uh, filling in of any gaps uh, in the model. Uh, that all gets uh, sanded out. And then uh, what's sprayed on is a metal flake and resin mixture uh, on the statue. Now, once that uh, resin cures... All of the metal flake powder uh, settles on the exterior surfaces of the statue. And then the next step is to sand through that resin uh, to reveal the metal base underneath. Um, so using a special uh, metal sanding and polishing technique really gives it that aged and tarnished look of a real bronze statue. The final step was to mount the statue on a, a very heavy uh, wooden base to give it just a nice finished look. And then it was custom crated up and sent up to Lake Superior State where they had an unveiling ceremony and were extremely uh, pleased with the results. And also I would like to thank Grand Theming in Tampa, Florida, for doing all of the paint work on this statue.